So just to reassure you, mathematically, these questions are not complicated. They're actually really straightforward to solve. The issue is that you need to understand a couple of bits of underlying chemistry first, and it tends to be those that are throwing people rather than the actual maths involved. So the first thing that you need to understand is the concept of limiting reagents. Now, at GCSE, when we did a, um, a reacting masses equation or something where you had to predict the yield, we tended to just give you the mass of one of the reactants and then pretend that there is exactly the right amount of the other reactant. Or we don't actually pretend that. What we do is we assume that it's an excess and we just kind of don't mention it in the question because we're trying not to confuse you. But the reality is that when you do a chemical reaction, you're always going to have slightly too much of one reactant and slightly too little of the other. And the one that there isn't enough of is what we call limiting. It's our limiting reagent, whereas the one that there's too much of is in excess. And it doesn't matter if that's a little bit excess or a big bit excess. That extra reactant is not going to be able to react because there's nothing for it to react with. So when you approach one of these questions, the first thing that you need to do is to work out which of your reactants is the limiting reagent, because that is the one that you're going to have to use to work out how many moles of product you can make. So if we start with a really straightforward example, I've got a simple acid alkali neutralization here. So if I've got 30 centimeters cubed of 0.5 mole of sodium hydroxide, I know that concentration is moles divided by volume and therefore moles is concentration times by volume. So 0.5 molar times by 0.030 decimeters cubed, because of course the volume has to be in decimeters cubed, gives me 0.015 moles of sodium hydroxide. And then if I use the same equation with my acid, I get 0.020 moles of acid. Now, this question is particularly straightforward because I've got no coefficients here. OK, so my alkali and my acid are reacting in a one to one ratio. And that means that I can just look at these numbers one to one and see, well, which is the bigger number? That's my excess. So here I can see quite clearly that my acid is an excess and my alkali is limiting. So if I was going to look at my products, I would be able to say that I'm going to make 0.015 moles of um, sodium chloride and of water. And that's going to use up all of my sodium hydroxide. And I'm going to have a little bit left over of the acid. 0.005 moles of acid is going to be left over. So if I was, you know, if I was trying to remove that salt, it wouldn't be pure salt. It would have hydrochloric acid on the outside of it. Here's a second example, and this one is less straightforward for two reasons. Firstly, because you need to use another equation, because this time round we have a solid reagent. And secondly, because this time round we have coefficients. So my first step is going to be, again, to work out the number of moles of each reactant that I have. So for my first reactant, for my magnesium, I now need to use mass as Mr. Mole instead. So 0.243 divided by 24.3 gives me 0 0.010 moles. So far, so straightforward. And 18 centimetres cubed of one molar hydrochloric acid is going to be 0.018 moles. Now, if you just looked at those numbers straight away, you might think that the acid is in excess because there's more of the acid. But if we look at our equation, we can see that we've got a coefficient 2 in front of the hydrochloric acid. And what that tells me is that for every one mole of magnesium, I need two moles of hydrochloric acid. So in order to completely react with this 0 0.010 moles of magnesium, I would need 0 0.020 moles of acid. And likewise, um, to react with my 0.018 moles of acid, I only need 0.009 moles of magnesium. So it's actually the magnesium that's in excess, not the acid. OK, and that's the first thing you have to bear in mind. You need to be looking at the coefficients and working out how many moles of the other reactant would actually react with whatever you've got. Now, when it comes to gases, there is a third way that we could be working out number of moles. So we've already looked at mass is Mr. Mole and concentration is moles divided by volume. But of course, with gases, we know that at room temperature and pressure, one mole of gas is going to take up 24 decimeters cubed. And if it's not room temperature and pressure, then we could use the ideal gas equation to work out exactly what it would be. Now, that's an important calculation and you do need to be able to do it, particularly if it comes up as part of a longer question and maybe you've got a reaction with a solid in there. But you've probably realised by now that these multiple choice questions are only worth one mark. And so you need to be a little bit selective with the working out that you do. And one of the shortcuts is that you know that all these gases, regardless of what the gas is, are going to take up the same volume per mole. 
And so you don't actually need to know exactly how many moles there are. You just need to know the relative ratios. So let's see how this works. If I've got 20 centimetres cubed of nitrogen reacting with 30 centimetres cubed of hydrogen, well, I could work out exactly how many moles that is. So I know that 20 centimetres cubed is 0.02 decimetres cubed, and I divide that by 24 to say that my nitrogen is 0.00083 moles, and my hydrogen is 0.00125 moles. But here's the thing. All I really need to know is that one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen. I can tell that from the equation. I can tell that from the coefficients. And so I can work out what volumes of each gas each one would react with, and likewise what volume they would make without actually needing to do this calculation. All I really need to do is work out which one is limiting and which one is excess. If we look at that same question, we can use the volumes from the question together with the coefficients from the equation to work out what the maximum volume is that each reactant could react with in a perfect ideal world. And therefore, we can work out which reactant is limiting without actually needing to work out the number of moles. So we're saving ourselves a step and saving ourselves a little bit of time, which is really important for these multiple choice questions. So if I take the nitrogen, I can see from the equation that it's reacting in a one to three ratio with hydrogen. So for every one mole of nitrogen, I need three moles of hydrogen. And because it's a gas, that's also going to be true of the volumes. So this wouldn't work if it was a solution or if it was a solid. So if I've got 20 centimetres cubed of nitrogen, I'm going to need three times more centimetres cubed of hydrogen. So it would react with 60 centimetres cubed of hydrogen if they were available. And then likewise with my hydrogen, that's reacting in a three to one ratio with the nitrogen. So I only need a third as much. So it would only react with 10 centimetres cubed of nitrogen, which is less than I've got. So without working out the number of moles, I can see that it's my nitrogen that is in excess. And so it doesn't matter that I've got 20 centimetres cubed because there just isn't enough hydrogen there for all of that nitrogen to react. What is going to react is this 10 centimetres cubed here and then all of the hydrogen because that's the limiting thing. So in terms of moving forwards and working out what volume of ammonia is going to be made and how many moles of ammonia is going to be made, these are the numbers I'm interested in. I don't really care about the fact that there's 20 centimetres cubed of nitrogen at the start, although we will need that before we're finished. But my first step is just identifying hydrogen is limiting. It's only going to react with 10 centimetres cubed of nitrogen, and that's the numbers that I need going forward. Before we go any further, let's just check that you've understood this concept of working out which reactant is limiting, especially when there are coefficients involved. So pause the video and work out what volume of the other reactant each of these eight chemicals could react with in an ideal world. And then once you've done that, figure out which one is limiting, because those are the numbers that we're going to need going forward. Question one is just the harbour process again. So again, we've got that one to three ratio. So you've hopefully worked out that 10 centimetres cubed of nitrogen can only react with 30 centimetres cubed of hydrogen, which is less than we've actually got. So that means that the nitrogen is the limiting one and only 30 centimetres cubed of hydrogen is going to react. Then for our second one, if we move down the column rather than across, so here we're making water, 30 centimetres cubed of hydrogen would react with 15 centimetres cubed of oxygen, which is more than we've got. 10 centimetres cubed of oxygen can only react with 20 centimetres cubed of hydrogen. Then if we move across and look at the combustion of methane, 10 centimetres cubed of methane would need 20 centimetres cubed of oxygen to fully combust, which is more than we have. 15 centimetres cubed of oxygen is only going to react with 7.5 centimetres cubed of methane, so half the total volume. And then finally, for the contact process, 40 centimetres cubed of sulphur dioxide would need 20 centimetres cubed of oxygen to react with. So in this instance, oxygen is limiting because there isn't enough. 10 centimetres cubed of oxygen is only going to react with 20 centimetres cubed of sulphur dioxide. So I've moved those volumes over slightly so that you can still see the original volumes because we do need to know how much is left over, how much of whatever chemical is in excess didn't react. 
because if we're working out a final volume, we don't just need to work out the yield of the reaction, we also need to know about anything that wasn't used up. So obviously, if we had 50 centimetres cubed of hydrogen and we only used 30, then there's 20 centimetres cubed left over. And likewise, if we had 30 centimetres cubed of hydrogen and we only used up 20, then there's 10 left over. And likewise, we've got 2.5 um, centimetres cubed of methane and we've got 20 centimetres cubed of sulphur dioxide. At this stage, we've worked out which reagent is limiting and which one is in excess. And for the excess reagent, how much is actually going to be used up in the reaction and what is going to be left over. Now, I've taken away those leftover numbers for the time being, because next we're going to work out what the yield of the reaction will be. And frankly, it's getting a bit crowded on my screen. So we're back looking at those coefficients. And again, um, we could do this in terms of moles, but because they're all gases, we know that the, um, the ratio of the volumes is going to be the same as the ratio of the moles. So we can just kind of skip some steps here. So if we look at my harbour process to begin with, um, I'm going to look at the number for nitrogen because um, doing a one to two ratio is a little bit easier in my head than a, a three to two ratio. So 10 centimetres cubed of nitrogen is going to produce twice as many moles of ammonia and because they're gases I know that volume is going to be twice as big so 10 centimeters cubed of nitrogen will make 20 centimeters cubed of ammonia likewise for my second equation when we made some water um, I can just take this, the volume of hydrogen and that will be the volume of water vapor made so 20 centimeters cubed there and then for methane I've got two gaseous products being made um, and they're going to have the same volume as the oxygen because the coefficients are the same so 15 there and 15 there and then finally, for the contact process, it will be the same volume as the volume of sulfur dioxide. The end point of these questions tends to be working out what the volume of the total reaction mixture will be. And the place that people come unstuck is that they are so excited to have worked out what the volume of the product will be that they forget that right back at the start when we worked out which one was limiting and which one was the excess, that there was some leftover excess and that needs to be included as well. So for this first example, we've made 20 centimetres cubed of ammonia, but also we've still got to take into account those 20 centimetres cubed of hydrogen, which didn't react in the first place. So that gives you a total volume of 40. And then likewise, in making water, we've made 20 centimetres cubed of water, but there was 10 centimetres cubed of hydrogen that didn't have enough oxygen to react with. So that makes a total volume of 30 centimetres cubed. And then likewise, um, with burning the methane, we've got a little bit of leftover methane that didn't burn. So that's 32.5. And likewise, um, with our final equation, we've got that leftover sulphur dioxide, which um, didn't fully oxidise. So we've got a total reaction mixture of 40 centimetres cubed. Here's one more opportunity to pause the video and make sure that you're now confident tackling this kind of calculation. They're all using the harbour process, so the math is going to be the same for each one. Your first step is going to be to look at the nitrogen and the hydrogen and work out how much of the other gas they could react with in an ideal world. And you can use those numbers to work out which one is limiting and which one is excess. So for the excess one, you need to see how much is actually going to react based on how much of the limiting reactant you've got. And the difference between those two numbers is going to be left over. So you're going to need that. And then you look at your limiting reactant and you use the numbers from that to work out what the yield of the reaction will be. So how much ammonia you're going to make. And when you add up the yield with the leftover of the excess reactant, then that's going to be your total volume. So pause the video and have a go at these seven. In this first question, we've obviously got a massive excess of nitrogen and only 20 centimetres cubed is actually going to react. So 20 centimetres cubed out of 75 to start with leaves you with 55 left over. That 20 centimetres cubed of nitrogen and 60 centimetres cubed of hydrogen will react together to make 40 centimetres cubed of ammonia. So those 40 centimetres cubed plus the 55 left over hydrogen is going to make 95 centimetres cubed in total. In our second question, the nitrogen is still in excess, albeit not by quite so much. So 30 will react with 20 left over, and this will make 60 centimetres cubed of ammonia because we've always got twice as much ammonia as we have nitrogen. And then 20 plus 60 makes 80. In the third example, we've still got an excess of nitrogen, this time only five centimetres cubed left over, and we're going to make 30 centimetres cubed of ammonia, so that gives us a total volume of 35. In the fourth question, we finally got um, our excess and our limiting the other way around. So 15 centimetres cubed of nitrogen can only react with 45 centimetres cubed of hydrogen, which again leaves us with five centimetres cubed left over to add on at the end. 
15 centimeters cubed, we've already said in the previous question, will make 30 centimeters cubed of ammonia. And so we've got a total volume of 35 centimeters cubed. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this by now. So we've got 25 centimeters cubed of nitrogen reacting, 15 centimeters cubed left over. We make 50 centimeters cubed of ammonia and we add those together to get 65. 10 centimeters cubed of nitrogen can only react with 30 centimeters cubed of hydrogen, giving us 20 left over. It's going to make 20 centimeters cubed of ammonia. And so we've got 40 centimeters cubed in total. And then finally, 25 centimeters cubed of nitrogen can react with three times as much hydrogen. So that's 75. So we've got five left over again. We're going to make twice as much ammonia as we had nitrogen. So that's 50. And that makes a total of 55 centimeters cubed. Thanks for watching. Fingers crossed Joe is a bit less confused now and hopefully so are you. Um, I hope you found that useful and if you did then don't forget to like and subscribe.